Welcome to Dubai. I'm here to invite you to come with me to another country, the UAE. That's the United Arab Emirates. This is a Muslim country in the Middle East on the other side of the world. That's the Burj Khalifa, tallest building in the world right there behind me. And the form of government here is a kingdom. But I've got good news to report to you that right here, Jesus is building his church. And I want you to meet my friend, Dr. Eric Zeller. All right, good afternoon. This is scripture of the day, coming to you live from Dubai, right here. Not really live, because I guess we're recording, so. <laughs> I mean, he picked us up from the airport in a pickup truck with a Don't Mess With Texas sticker on it, and he moved his wife and five kids here. They all came together to start the Gulf Theological Seminary and partner with Redeemer Church of Dubai. And so he invited me to come here and teach a class on faith and church ministry packed into this classroom with students from all, really all around the world who now live here in Dubai and go to several different churches. I mean, there's people live streaming this class from the United Kingdom, from Kuwait, from Abu Dhabi. And I'm telling them, when you hear the words of Jesus, you gotta do what he says. And the way that it goes from hearing to doing is this very important thing in our lives, faith. And that's what we're here to talk about on scripture of the day. When I think about faith as it applies to our context, I think back to the Great Commission. I think where Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. And we, we live in a place like Dubai. 90% of the people that live here come from other countries. So many of those countries, so many of those nations are places where the gospel is not known. But we look at scripture, we say, Jesus wants disciples to be made of all of those nations, of all of those peoples. And here in Dubai, we're seeing that happen. We have people from 60 different countries represented in our church here in Dubai. We have people from all across the world who want to go back to the countries that they came from and serve the church there. And so we're believing that Jesus wants disciples to be made from every nation, and we're seeing him do it here in Dubai. So my family's lived here in Dubai for the last seven years. And so for seven years, we've been working here alongside of the church and training up pastors and church planters for this region. We moved overseas initially to India and later to the UAE because we saw a need in the church in this part of the world. There's a huge need for the gospel. This is where the least reached people in the world live. And the way that those people are gonna hear the gospel is through churches faithfully proclaiming God's word. And so our goal in the work that we have is to raise up leaders for those kinds of churches. Pastor Bobby and I had a lunch back in November in California, and we were talking about uh, starting new ministries, whether that's planting a church or starting a seminary and just thinking through, you know, why do things like this? Why take on huge projects? Is it because, you know, you've got a lot of great ideas and you've got a lot of, you know, worldly skills and wisdom and entrepreneurial aptitude and those kinds of things? And bottom line, the answer is no. Bottom line is, um, is what you want to be driven by in ministry is faith that God is going to do what he said he's going to do and that faith is going to drive you to do what it takes to get that ministry accomplished to do what it takes to plant that church where a church isn't to do what it takes to start a new work a new ministry a new seminary in a place where that's the greatest need and so uh, that's what we're thinking about this week when we think about faith is doing what it takes to do the work that God has said he's going to do Today's chapters are Matthew 6 and 7. That's right, the Sermon on the Mount from Jesus. So I wanna invite you to open the Bible with me and go to the Gospel of Matthew. And hopefully you've read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, this famous discourse from Jesus where he preached on the Mount of Beatitudes on the northern part of the Sea of Galilee to the crowds. And I had some time on my hands when I flew out here to Dubai. It was a 16 hour flight. And so I watched this classic movie, Ben-Hur. Does anybody remember this movie with Charlton Heston from the 1950s? Usually I'm like, this movie's too long, like three and a half hours. But when you're on a 16 hour flight, feels like the appropriate time to watch an epic saga. I think it even won Academy Awards. And it's this story of Charlton Heston's character, Judah Ben-Hur, and all that he goes through. But throughout his life, he has interactions with Jesus, although you never see his face. 
And in one of the scenes, the crowd is all coming together and they take their seats all going up on this hill and then he walks out and there's Jesus about to teach to the multitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, I hope you're enjoying reading the Gospel of Matthew. And Matthew is really defined by five discourses. And I get that because if you go to the end of the sermon with me, so go to Matthew chapter seven and, and look with me all the way here at the end of the sermon. And it'll say this, this phrase that gets repeated throughout the Gospel of Matthew, where it's like, and when Jesus finished these sayings, and this is repeated four other times, and it marks these five different discourses that I think are a helpful outline to the Gospel of Matthew. So the Sermon on the Mount is the first and most famous of the discourses in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. But in Matthew 10, there's the discourse where he sends out the disciples. And then in Matthew 13, you've got the parables of the kingdom. In Matthew 18, you've got the discourse on the church. And in Matthew 24 and 25, you've got the Olivet Discourse, which is about the eschatology, the end of all things. And so I wanna go through particularly the Sermon on the Mount, and I want you to see how people respond. Hey, you want this box? I want you and me to have a serious talk about what it would be like to hear a sermon from Jesus. Imagine we were sitting there with the crowd right by the calm waters of the sea and we're listening to the words of Jesus. And when Jesus had said these things, when he finished speaking, there was a response. And, and Matthew is very clear to describe it for us. In fact, Mark and Luke, they also want us to know when people heard Jesus teach, this is what they thought about it. The crowds were astonished at his teaching. They marveled, they had wonder at the words of Jesus. For he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. So this is a key word here when it says that Jesus taught with authority. Exousia is the Greek word. And this is gonna be a theme throughout the Gospel of Matthew. Maybe you know that at the end in Matthew 28, Jesus is gonna to announce to his disciples all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he's gonna send them out on the mission to go and make more disciples of all nations. Why? Because Jesus calls the shots. What Jesus says goes. And if you got to hear Jesus preach for these three chapters, and I hope you've been paying attention, maybe even closer attention than you ever have before, to the words of Jesus. When they came away from hearing those words, they're like, yeah, he's not just like one of the teachers telling us about like what God says. No, when Jesus says it, it has authority over our lives. He gets to tell us what to do. And this is so important because at our church, when I'm preaching the sermons, I don't have the authority of Jesus. I just preach the word of Christ. I just preach what the Bible says. But I can tell that a lot of people have a take it or leave it attitude with scripture. A lot of people, they'll apply the word, they'll sprinkle the scripture onto their life, but it's not definitive. It's not like whatever Jesus says, he's the Lord. And so I'm ready to hear him and do whatever it is he says, because he has authority over me. So I wanna ask you, when we're reading the most important sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus, are you thinking, wow, I really gotta make sure that I'm hearing Jesus and doing what he says. Now that's how this sermon ended. If you wanna go back and look at Matthew 7, 24 to 27, it's a familiar picture of the wise man and the foolish man. Those were the motions we used to make in church when I was growing up. And I remember the wise man built his house upon the rock, right? And uh, the, the waves are gonna come, the wind is gonna blow, and the rain came a-tumbling down, right? And, and the floods came up, and that's the thing, that everybody's gonna be tested by the trials of this life. And the wise man, his house stands. Now the foolish man who builds his house on the sand, like here at the beach, not a great foundation. The foolish man who builds his house on the sand, well, when the winds come and the uh, floods rise and the rain comes tumbling down, his house went splat. I remember saying that as a kid. 
So we, you maybe heard the story, there's a wise man and a foolish man, but do you realize the difference between the two of them? Both of them hear the words of Jesus. Both of them read the Sermon on the Mount. One of them hears it and he does what Jesus says. The other one hears it and he doesn't do what Jesus says. Hearing Jesus and doing what he says, that's what decides whether we live or whether we die. A great uh, prophecy for you to go back and look up is Deuteronomy chapter 18. Remember how Moses said that a prophet would rise up uh, like him and whoever listened to this prophet, he will live and whoever does not hear the words of this prophet, that God is going to require it of him. So there's nothing more important than listening to the teaching of Jesus and doing what he says. And this is the part that I came here to talk about in Dubai that, that Dr. Zeller invited me to come and speak in that classroom. And I'm having such a great time getting to know these students and hopefully some of them are gonna go plant churches in, in, in the countries they came from, maybe India or the Philippines or Africa or here on the Arabian Peninsula. But we're talking about what is the difference? Like what is the transition between the one who hears the word and then actually goes and does, does the word? Like how does that happen? And the answer is faith. That's the difference. Like when I hear the word and I trust in it, I respond to it the right way. I hear what Jesus says, I believe what he says, and I'm ready to obey it. See, faith is what takes you from being just a hearer to a hearer who does what Jesus says. And so it comes down, when we say, oh yeah, I believe Jesus, well, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. And this sermon, it is the word of Christ. It is his teaching. Clearly, Jesus is explaining to us how he wants us to live, to seek first the kingdom. He does not want us to be, O oh, ye of little faith, who are just worried about our physical lives. What are we going to eat? What are we going to wear before we die? No, he wants us to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. He'll take care of all of the physical things, but he wants us to be people who really have faith because he has spoken to us and we've heard the word of the Lord. So I'm asking you a personal question in response to this sermon. You know, sometimes at church you go around and you ask people, hey, what did you think about the sermon? And they're like, yeah, it was good. Well, nobody's allowed to say that here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. If you say, oh, that was a good sermon from Jesus, eh, wrong answer. No, here's the question. What did you hear from Jesus? Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. He has said so many things in these three chapters. What did you hear? And when you hear it, you're ready to respond with faith. You're ready to trust in what Jesus says. You submit yourself to his authority over your life. And you're like, okay, Jesus, you're calling the shots. When I hear you say this, I'm going to go and do it. I'm asking everybody, will you pick something from these three chapters, maybe from the chapter today, Matthew 7. What is it that Jesus said? And you hear it and you're like, yes, I'm going to do it because I have faith in Jesus. You know, I love it when Jesus says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. And then he goes on to say, everyone who asks receives. And I wonder, hey, do you really believe? Like, do you really pray? Like Jesus said, if you ask, you will receive. Like that's one of the ways you can know if you're really responding to Jesus with faith is in how you pray. Are you like, Jesus, you said this and I believe it. So I'm asking you to do it because you said this or since you said this, will you now do this? That's what we're talking about here in Dubai in our class of faith. And that's what I want to say to you back home at Compass HB. Like, hey, when Jesus speaks to us, do we hear him in his authority? And do we do what he says? Because we believe the words of Jesus. Let's have faith in response to the scripture here today. So I'd love it if you would leave a comment on the particular part of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, or 7. Like, what was it that stood out to you? Like, I hear you, Jesus, on this, and you're gonna respond with faith, and you're gonna be ready to be a, not just a hearer, but a doer, because you believe the words of Jesus. So I'd love for you to encourage one another in the comments here down below, and I hope that you will pray for our church. It's so exciting to see what God's doing here in the church. We're gonna go check out the Burge over the next couple of days. You're going to maybe get to meet uh, some of the people here in Dubai or see us involved with the church here. And so I'd love for you to continue to join us the next two days here from Dubai. But today, 
as you're living your life, what did Jesus say that you're saying, I hear you, Jesus, and I'm ready to do it because I have faith. Leave a comment down below and I will see you for more from Dubai on scripture of 